following TLOI episode is a throwback interview that I did in the past. This will now be formatted as a podcast episode. It's hard for Jersey to unify. So, other states, they kind of have like a true, true. one music scene. Yeah, but here it's like competition sometimes, so it's back. <laughs> true, true. I know what you mean. Um... And yeah, I think like since with the come up to you know like it's pretty interesting so far, and um, even just like growing up in history uh, in Jersey, like like what was your like musical history and background like, and what inspired you to you know take a part in being a rapper and a musician at the same time? Um, so I grew up listening to a lot of like Motown, uh, soul music and stuff. Yeah, so uh, I like, grew up on a lot of soul music and uh, classic Motown stuff, Jackson 5, Stevie Wonder. Um, I didn't really, really start listening to rap till I was about 13. I wasn't allowed to because my, you know, the curses and stuff. <laughs> um, so that's definitely an influence. And then once I discovered like mid-2000s Kanye West, like late registration, graduation, that period is when I got into hip hop and like telling stories. So definitely a heavy influence there. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, I was uh, watching your last interview and you did explain about like uh, you know listening to soul music and like you couldn't like listen to like rap like until like a certain time because I think it's like your family like was like sort of like against it like for a bit until you started creating your music. So. Um, when you created like Ronald the project, uh, like what was the creative uh, process like in making the album, and what thoughts were established to make it? Like, would it be like, would it be something for your parents to listen to? Would it be something for e- for everyone else to listen to, or like, what would be the whole concept of it? Um. So I mean, my whole reason, you know, for getting into music was kind of like. When I started, uh, when I started college, and how it was like therapy for me because I was going through a rough time, <laughs> um, and it's always stuck with me as that like kind of like a coping mechanism type thing. Uh, and then for this album, it's because uh, I had kind of went through like some relationship issues and like a breakup and everything, so I was like in a lot of pain at that time. Also, kind of a uh, just feeling alone again, you know, like after you get out of a relationship and it's like kind of like you're back by yourself. <laughs> so it's like, um, I was right there. And uh, I just wanted to make an album that was true to me, man, my, like my life and where I was at at the time. So Ronald just tells the story of like all the different emotions going through my head at the time and how I was feeling, trying to learn myself again so i know what you mean man and like when i listened to the project too like the skits were like the interesting part because it was sort of like more therapeutic based with uh one person speaking to you like i think in a in a british accent and then you know it was just getting to the voices and getting to the emotions of the sound too so like in the first song it was like more melodic and like in other songs too like it kind of had the process of how do you feel, like, in social, like, scenes? How do you feel with other people? Like, are they being happy? All that type of stuff, too. And, like, ha- like having mental health as, like, one concept of the project uh, and your experience with mental health, like, as a major factor in your expression on the project. What made you, like, want to display on such a strong medium? And how do you feel about the impact that the album had with various, like, listeners, like, listening to it? Um... So uh, mental health is the main reason I'm involved in this. Uh, like I said, you know, if it wasn't for my struggles with that, I probably wouldn't have started doing music seriously. Like it was a coping thing that turned into wanting to be a musical artist. And that's kind of where I found my personality. And, you know, like I, I wouldn't feel right if I don't use my platform that I'm trying to build to speak on these issues that, people are suffering through um so nobody really wants to talk about it you know but that's the first step to like getting more resources and getting help so i don't care like i'll tell anybody my story and uh try to get mental health out there and just let people know it's okay especially in minority communities <laughs> so. 
true, true. And, you know, like, I think with this year and, like, through all the previous years, you know, it's more of an, like, a surcharge, like, a more of a big, like, increase towards, like, mental health awareness in the black community. But, uh, like, speaking about your perspective, how do you feel about the importance of mental health awareness in the black community? And do you feel that there can be progression in knowing that the stigma of mental health is reduced in the community? Or would it be, like, kind of different? Um, definitely, uh, within the, the black community, um, there's a lot of work to be done, um, in regards to that. It's like, uh, I've always had this feeling, I think I speak on that in the one song, Suicidal, uh, older generations, you know, it's like, you, you go through problems, you're suffering, but you, you keep that to yourself, and I never understood that, because then it, like, it's a family environment where you can't talk openly with your relatives. Um, and if you do talk, then they like just call you crazy or it's just like, oh, just, you know, go lay down. You'll feel better type thing. Um, in our community, it should be something that's talked about because apparently, you know, a lot of more people are dealing with this behind closed doors than we think or that we know. Um, so just making it okay and changing the way that our our people behave regarding this topic is very important. Um, once we get rid of the stigma, it's like we make so much progress in this whole field, man. Yeah, I know what you mean, and true. And I do feel like that there has been some issues right now, especially with COVID-19. Like, there have been, like, higher cases and, like, domestic violence, like, higher cases and protests and all these other things going on, too, and, like speaking within the music industry like since COVID-19 happened do you feel like the pandemic ha the pandemic has like affected the way you tend to proceed with business and uh since then did you change or tweak some things that had to be handled for your business in a pandemic like that um well my goals for this year before all this was I wanted to perform in like any state that I could uh, I wanted to travel across the country this year and, you know, experience different places and get my name out there like that. Uh, and then COVID came, kind of just ruined all that. But um, I guess in terms of my plan, it, it, it made me realize that there's kind of more time. So it's not necessarily a loss because um, everybody is now isolated in their houses and the world kind of stopped. So now I'm trying to think of ways to take over the internet instead <laughs> um, and spread like that. Uh, so that's what I've been working on. Of course, marketing and stuff is hard to do. And the industry today is super saturated with artists. So everybody's trying to get you to hear them. Um, so just trying to do that in innovative ways is what I'm working on right now for the rest of the year. I just want to grow, man. <laughs> I know what you mean. And I do feel like there is time to grow too. Um, but I feel like it might move differently nowadays too since the change of music has been a big impact in other stuff too. And with another artist that I've interviewed uh, for a while back saying that with smaller or like not capable, like not very capable artists like being affected by this because most of their shows is like more like, a big factor because of show money, so, like, that's how, like, most of the money would usually come, but, uh, right. like, I think, like, in your, in that case, like, it is, like, a very big impact, especially for independent, independent artists, too, because they do tend to receive the most money from shows, with streaming and everything else, it gets different as well, so, yeah. Right, yeah, and that's one thing I, I realized, uh, I'm not, I, when I was doing this, I do it out of, like, love and passion for making music. Uh, I know other independent artists that are already, you know, all about the money. Like, that's all that matters to them is getting those streams and uh, charging people for features, even though it's not going to do anything for anybody else. Like, I, mean, I don't do anything like that. You know, I just enjoy making music, you know. Um, but it's cool that I'm starting to get to a point where, I'm starting to make some sense, I guess, like, <laughs> with my music. That's just, like, a cool side benefit from doing something that I love, and that's amazing to me. I want to do this for a living, but I have 
a long way to go for that. <laughs> I know what you mean. And as your progression in making music, which would tend to grow, will there ever be a chance for you to drop more concept albums or songs like Ronald's in the future? Or do you feel like you want to make uh, another straight album just discussing your story, like, in a way? Um, I always want to have a concept or some type of creative ideas, man. Um, it's all about standing out and being different. I could put out an album that's just, like, tracks that sound good, but I feel like that doesn't really benefit anything. Um, I just love the whole storytelling process and, like, what I can do. Like, it's a free world. <laughs> Uh, making art and music so whenever I can put my creative brain to work doing stuff like that I will um, and I, I mean I'm, I always plan to keep making content like for the rest of the year uh, I just try not to you know put too much stuff out to the point that people are like getting tired of me <laughs> uh, like future other artists that drop a song every week like it's not it's not beneficial so True, true. I like to keep people on their toes. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, speaking of like other artists too, like, would there be like any other artists that you would like to collaborate with in the future, or would you ever like experiment with any other like genres in the future, like besides rap? Um. Yeah, man. I love all types of music except for honestly, like country music. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I like like rock. Hip hop influence, uh, R and B, Tame and Paula type music, uh, Frank Ocean, all that type of stuff. Uh, I don't want to confine myself to just rap. I try to do stuff with different genres. Um, I would love to work with Travis Scott or Tame and Paula one day, <laughs> or any of the Dreamville uh, rappers. I really wish I like they would call me or sign me or something. <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, I think just to end off the interview right now, um, besides like having plans for touring like within the year, do you have any other plans for this year in terms of like any other music dropping or other creative ideas or projects or so forth? And do you have any final words you would like to say for any creative or any person pursuing their dreams? Um, so for the rest of the year, I just want to get my... Uh um, the music that I already made heard, um, so I'm going to work on building my Spotify and all that and genuine organic numbers to build my fan base uh, and still drop new content as well, uh, but that's all I'm pretty much doing this year. Um, and for artists, I would just say make sure you genuinely love doing this and you don't have some other type of side motive like you just want to be famous for no reason because uh, it's not going to give you the endurance that you need to make it this type of stuff like i'm already years in and still a beginner at the same time it's crazy <laughs> but uh um yeah just make sure you love what you're doing or it's not going to work out <laughs>